Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and I just wanted to make a more serious video talking about my truth. Just kidding, not really. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new to this channel, I am a sculptor. I sculpt anything and everything out of polymer clay, and in today's video, I will be sculpting a mad scientist. <laughs> Is this my most ambitious project ever? No, probably not. But I do teach you guys a cool little trick later on in the video and I've never done it before on my channel. So this was a good excuse to use it and you'll see what I mean in a second. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Let's gather our materials. All right, let's start the armature. I'm making the torso, legs, feet, and everything out of one piece of aluminum foil. And as always, all the materials and tools that I use in this video that you saw in the previous clip are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you'd like to purchase anything. Now we're just holding all of that aluminum foil together with some masking tape. Now for this mad scientist, I've opted for a more simple design that I briefly mentioned earlier, but I certainly do not want this to take away from his general aesthetic. I want him to embody the same style as the rest of the figurines in our monster series. Now with that being said, I'm going for a slender build with a sort of hunchback that a few of the other characters have as well, and if you haven't seen my other monster series videos, be sure to check them out when you have a sec. Um, I will link the playlist up above in the info card section for you. Now once that aluminum structure is completely covered in super sculpy and completely smoothed out, it's time to start adding some details. And as you can see here, I'm trying something a little different with the legs and the feet. I'm making them one piece to start and then I will be dividing them into two separate legs and feet with a couple different tools. This is just going with the style that I'm looking to create for him. After marking out the initial separation, with my pin tool, I'm just going in with my spoon tool to create a sort of wedge that will give them more of a separate look and feel. Now once I have them shaped out for the most part, I'm just adding a pleat to each of the pant legs with a snake of clay, blending the edges in like so and shaping them out and then now I am creating the bottom of the pants with another snake of clay that was flattened out and here I am blending the top edge in with the rest of his leg. The whole process up to this point went by so fast and I couldn't believe that it's already time for arms and to add the arms I'm just piercing a hole through the top of the shoulders like that with my bamboo skewer, adding some 12 gauge aluminum wire all the way through, and now I am just sort of securing them in place with some more Super Sculpey. And that's looking pretty good. Our mad scientist is starting to take shape. Now it's time to add his neck. I'm just poking another hole with my bamboo skewer like that, cutting off the excess, and then Shifting really quick down back to the pants, um, bulking those out a little bit, like so. After bulking out his chest a little bit, it's time to just go in and refine some details with my spoon tool. As you can probably tell throughout this entire video, I really didn't have a good idea of how this guy was going to look. I'm literally just making him up as I go, and you can tell just by how many times I jump around. Now I'm creating the edges of his shirt by adding a flattened snake of clay to his chest, blending in one side, not liking how that's looking, so doing it over, and pretty much doing the same thing I just did. But for some reason I like that one better. Now we're just adding his collar here. As I'm doing this, I'm reminded of one of my first Instagram videos where I do the exact same thing. My process hasn't changed very much at all, has it? Which is fine, I mean, you find something that works, and you stick with it. Now it's time to add his lab coat. I'm just smoothing out the bottom half of that line because that's where his coat is going to close in the front. Now I'm adding the lapels, cutting out a couple notches in them, and then refining a couple things before moving on to the next step. Now I'm adding the bottom half of his lab coat. I'm just measuring that out here 
and pinching the edges a little bit just so they don't have such a harsh edge. And adding that on around his waist, pressing it into place, and then blending the top edge in with the rest of his body. Now using my pin tool, I'm just adding a line separation for each side of his jacket, and now it's time to add some fabric wrinkles and folds. After adding the last wrinkle, it's time to add some buttons. And I'm just sort of feeling those out here, trying to get a size that I like. Now we're going to add some pockets. These are just very thin pieces of clay that I rolled through my pasta maker on the 6 setting. And I'm just pressing those into place, like so. Now we're moving the buttons over, because I knew they were on the wrong side. Adding another pocket, and then... We're going to add some wrinkles to his pants just to heighten the detail on them so they're not so flat and geometric looking. After finishing off his button-down shirt, it's time to create a bow tie. I thought this would be a nice addition. And that bow tie didn't look very good, so we're going to start over here. Make a thinner one that goes on a little bit better. Then I'm just going to attach the bow tie with some bacon bond. After adding some final details with my taper tip color shaper, that's looking pretty good. Time to make the head. To start the head, of course, I am shaping it out roughly in aluminum foil, covering that with some Super Sculpey, and then we're going to give him some goggles. To create the goggles, I'm going to be using a couple 12mm cabochons. These are going to be the lenses, and they're going to magnify his eyes to create a realistic goggle effect, and this is that cool little tip that I mentioned in the intro. To start the goggles and make the frames, I'm using Black Primo so that it's easier to paint, and I'm adding a thin snake of clay around the circumference of each cabochon, being sure to embed the cabochon into the clay as much as possible so it doesn't pop out down the road. Now once those are made, I'm going to pre-bake them and then go from there. Once they're baked, we're just going to set them aside and we are going to create the eyes on our mad scientist's face. And I'm just pressing out the eye sockets with my large ball stylus, adding some white clay. Doesn't matter what shape the eyes are because the goggles are going to magnify them. Kind of like that. So once the white clay is in, I'm just going to create a pupil or iris with some black clay, making sure that looks pretty good before moving forward, pressing that in, and then repeating the process on the other side. I want him to look a little cross-eyed, so hence the cross-eyed position, and then one pupil is bigger than the other. Now the next step is to make the edges of the goggles. These are flattened snakes of clay, and we're going down. Oh, what a cool panning effect that was. Alright, anyway, now we're just adding the edge of the goggles, like so, shaping that out using a couple different tools, and because the front is pre-baked, makes this much easier. Now I'm just poking a hole in the bottom to let air escape. If you don't do this, it'll pop out in the oven and you'll be very sad. Wow, look at that. All right, let's make the other one. Now once the goggles are in place, I am going to detail the rest of his face. And here I'm adding a pretty exaggerated brow bone, but I don't like it, so I get rid of it. And we're going to just do the mouth now instead. And I'm just pressing out the mouth with this tool, like so, where the teeth are going to be, and he's going to have a very devilish grin. So, 
we're doing that here. Then once that's shaped out, I'm just going to elongate his chin just a little bit and then press out some other wrinkles. Now it's time to create the teeth and I'm just using my dental explorer tool to do that. And I want him to have like big, long, crooked teeth. I love how his smile turned out. I think that's my favorite part of this whole figurine. Now we're just going to give him a few forehead wrinkles instead of that brow bone that we were trying to do earlier. Hmm. Will a small nose suffice? No. Take it out. Okay. Bigger nose. Here we go. That looks better. But it's a little too big, so we'll take a little bit off and then just keep working it until it's at a point that I like. Just blending in the edges there using my firm detail tools. Now we're giving him some nostrils. Here's some satisfying nostril action for you. Shaping everything out. Adding the centerpiece to the goggles and yes i am aware that i forgot to add arms or temples to the sides of the goggles to hold them onto his head i'll have to add them at a later date now i'm just making some ears for him not sure why i sculpted this one separate from his head but whatever it worked And that's looking pretty good. Now before I bake him, I just want to brush the entire surface with some clay softener to remove fingerprints and smooth everything out. Can't forget his body. Now it's time for the oven. And once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to add the arms. Or add the clay to the arms. And I'm just shaping out the wire first, seeing how his head looks, making sure the neck is the right length. Adding that clay to the arms, this is just a snake of clay that I cut um, all the way down but I didn't go all the way through so that I could wrap around the wire easily. I'm just doing that. And I feel like I've said snake of clay in this video more than I have in any other video. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying it like every clip. Now it's time for my favorite part, the hands. Just kidding, I hate making hands. And if you can't tell already, I want his arms and hands to be in this sort of thinking position like he's up to no good. He's plotting something crazy. World domination, perhaps. Now I'm just finishing off his sleeves. And that's looking pretty good. What do you think? All right, now it's time for his hair. And right away, of course, the first thing I thought of was to give him crazy Albert Einstein, Dr. Emmett Brown hair, but I wanted to do something a little different, so I decided on this kind of straight up in the air pointy look i like how it turns out and how i didn't just go with the first thing i thought of so i don't know i think it suits him after adding all the different layers of hair i'm just cleaning up his hairline and then i'm going to use my dental explorer tool to create the lines in the hair like that we're just going to go over the entire thing until it's completely covered in lines Now to attach his head, I just added a little bit of bacon bond and I'm covering that in clay, blending that in with my spoon tool, brushing the entire surface of the hair and arms with some clay softener to remove fingerprints, and he's ready for his last bake. And then once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to paint. I'm starting with his lab coat using Folk Art Taffy.
After a couple coats of taffy, it's time for his pants and shoes. I decided to make these black, so I'm using Folk Art Pure Black. Now to create a gray color for his skin, I just mixed warm white, pure black, and boulder together with a little bit of beige to get this color right here. And then for his teeth, I'm going to paint a base coat of Folk Art Lemonade, like so, being careful not to go outside the lines. Then once that's completely dry, I'm going to antique it with some watered down brown. And I tinted the brown with a little bit of black. Once that's completely dry, I'm going over all of the teeth, dry brushing some warm white. And those came out really good. I was really happy with those. Now I'm just darkening some of his wrinkles or antiquing them. And then painting his gloves black, like so. Painting his button down shirt using warm white. And then painting his hair with some bolder, tinted a little bit darker with pure black. And then once that's completely done and dry, I am just dry brushing some warm white over that to highlight all the raised areas. Then to further detail his lab coat, I just created a sort of medium brown wash that I am just brushing over the entire surface and wiping off the excess with a paper towel. Once that's completely dry, I'm going in with some more warm white on the lab coat just to highlight the raised areas, just like his hair, creating a different effect. Now for his bow tie, I'm using Folk Art Imperial Red tinted with pure black to create this nice color here. And I did lighten it just a little bit, as you can see. Once that's done, it's time to paint the goggles. Like so, I'm using dark green to start, and then I lighten that up with a lighter green. And he's done. Here's a quick shot of how the goggles look. I really like how they magnify his eyes. Cool use for a cabochon, I would say. Let me know what you think of our mad scientist in the comments. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. And that's a wrap. I hope you like the mad scientist. Like I said earlier, he's not the craziest thing I've ever made, but I'm really happy with how he turned out. And sometimes simple can be a good thing. And I just really like how his goggles look. You can't really tell because of the lighting in here, but they're so cool, I love it. Okay, anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. I upload new videos every Friday. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay, and I will see you in the next one.